Chang. I'm from the Bling Ring. It opens June 21st. Please go see it. Game three of the Hawks tonight. How, how are you feeling about the series so far? I'm freaking nervous because last game didn't go so well. Like we were really great in the first and then second and the third stunk and the, the first OT was like, it could have been anybody, <coughs> pardon me. And then it was over, but um, I'm nervous. How difficult has it been to like want to focus your attention on that and having all this press oh, stuff going on? I get the updates on my phone. So a couple of days ago during an interview, I was just like, yeah, Sophia was, Sophia was great. <laughs> it's been difficult. It's been hard. No, I mean, and last year, last year when we were filming the movie, the playoffs were going on. Obviously, we lost in the first round to the Coyotes, which sucked. But um, watching, like being on set one time we were shooting until 1 a.m. and I was just watching on a really crummy live stream on my phone like <laughs> shouting at the screen people thought I was crazy well I have to imagine it's been I mean so surreal for you in so many ways is there something about this whole press tour experience that you feel like you've been kind of like an undercover member of the public uh, like just <laughs> average citizen that now having gone through this what, like what what really surprised you that you'd like people to know yeah. about that process i'm gonna make a reference that's going to reveal my age <laughs> and the things that i like to do Go for it. i feel like i'm hannah montana <laughs> <laughs> um, no it just it feels very i don't know it feels like i'm living two different worlds especially when i was in school too like i would go off and like one weekend, I, I flew to LA with my mom and my best friend, and we went to the MTV Movie Awards, and then on Monday, I had a math test. It just feels really, there's like a disconnect between my lives, but um, it's been working so far. Yeah. Well, was there a moment when you were in France promoting the movie that, like, you were thinking about, wow, I can't believe I'm here, or this reminds me of something from home, or something <laughs> like that? Yeah, when we were riding over, so at, on the red carpet at Cannes, they're really like strict about who can go on the red carpet. So my and my mom, so my mom had to go with like all the other moms, and they weren't allowed on the red carpet, and they had to go take their seats in the theater. So it was just me and my publicist, who's like my best friend at this point because I just cry to her all the time. Cry? <laughs> Why? No, it's just like because you know they work you so hard, and I'm like. It's either I'm so tired or it's like I love that dress and I want to keep it. <laughs> Have you really been reduced to tears because of it? No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm over dramatic <laughs> in any sense of my life, in any part of my life. But um, no, she's just like the best. So we were riding over and I had this moment where I was sitting in like this beautiful dress and I had these crystals in my hair and we're riding over in the special car to go walk the red carpet at Cannes. And I was like, I started getting teary eyed because I couldn't believe that um, that A, it was coming to an end, because that was kind of the beginning of the end of our press, but also B, that I was even there to begin with. And then we got up on the carpet and we were waving, and um, I felt like I was in that scene in Entourage when they're at Cannes. <laughs> and then, of course, I got really freaked out because when they go to Cannes, they bomb. And so I was like, oh my God, I'm in Entourage. Oh my God, the movie's gonna suck. <laughs> but it didn't, people liked it, so. <laughs> yes, I, I think Medellin was probably so bad that no movie could ever be in Cannes. It's just like, they shouldn't have made that movie. <laughs> Just do Aquaman 2, make the money, and then you can do whatever movie that, you want. Um, in a different interview, you talked about seeing versions of the kids in the film mm -hmm. um, growing up in Winneka. How can you tell when, when someone who is a classmate, a friend, whatever, how can you tell when they seem to have some kind of like celebrity fixation and are really being similar to the girls in the film? Well, just now, after having done the movie, going home and going back and I had a month left of school when I got home and so kind of reintegrating and going back to classes and taking all the tests and being with my peers again I found it was really shocking how um, just the questions that I was asked because if I knew someone who had gone off and done a Sofia Coppola film I would have been like did you meet Francis Ford did you get to meet you know I don't know Harris Savides her cinematographer like what was Sofia like right. but instead the most common questions that I got were like is Paris Hilton mean? Like, what is Emma Watson like? Not what's, like, her, what's Paris Hilton no, like, like, is, is she Paris mean? Hilton mean? Is she an idiot? No, she's nice and she's incredibly intelligent. What's Emma Watson like? Like, are you guys best friends now? You know, it was just weird. How, do you, how did you answer stuff like that? I would just smile and, you know that's, oh, what's that movie? Oh, it's like Madagascar when the penguins go smile and wave. That's what, I, that's what my mom <laughs> told me to do. I was really freaked out about going home and she goes, just smile and wave. I don't know, I was just, I tried to be gracious, but at the same time, I don't think people know how like invasive and kind of uh, obsessive they can come off as. Um, and so those questions were really difficult to deal with, I guess, only because 
I would never, I don't know, it just wasn't in my nature to ask those types of questions and be that forward about it. But, um, but people seemed excited about it, and yeah, I saw those obsessive qualities in them, and it bothered me, but um, I don't know, I, I, they weren't mean, so people weren't like rude about it. I thought it was interesting you talked about you know, trying to figure out, well, why me? Why, why did Sophia see something in me? And I know you, like, in your audition tape or initial tape, you talked about dinosaurs, you're just kind of being <laughs> yourself. But then you said that you turn the switch on and off to become Rebecca in the tape. What, what did you do to become her in the tape and turn off Katie and become her? I think I kind of broke that wall down between like moral me and my moral center and like Rebecca and her lack of a moral center. Because mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a wall between like, oh, you know, everybody can be mean and everybody can be selfish, but we, we try not to be those things, but Rebecca doesn't really try not to be selfish. That's just who she is. Yeah. And so once I kind of let, let go of that inhibition and, and actually started to have fun with being a kind of domineering, almost um, really two-faced fake character, because it is fun to play a character like that, um, then it became like this whole new thing of, of actually just kind of assuming the character and, and falling into her instead of kind of trying to contrive a a character out of who I was. Yeah. I think once you just completely let yourself go and become the other person, then it becomes so much more real as opposed to trying to build on top of yourself, which sometimes works. But for a character that's so different than yourself, sometimes you just have to completely let yourself go. Can you give me a sense of what that transition looks like? <laughs> to be the character? Yeah. Well, for one, I wouldn't want to sit here in the sun. It's so <laughs> disgusting out. I don't like your shirt. <laughs> she's mean she's just like I don't know she just it's not that she says whatever she wants it's just that she thinks whatever she wants and doesn't have a have a conscience about thinking or doing this water is dangerously close to room temperature yeah well it's because the ice has melted so quickly that I think it's like I don't know it's like we're being x-rayed <laughs> we need some colder ice here or something I can't believe I'm doing this right now this is so stupid She's mean. I would never want to be like in a room with her. <laughs> that was good though. And you watch the hills and keep up with the Kardashians. What what stood out there and was useful for the character? Well, definitely like at the beginning, the accent, just because I'm from Chicago. And Why didn't you watch the Californian skit on SNL? <laughs> Let's take the four or five to the ten. It's funny now. Like living in LA, I know what they're talking about. And within, if I had lived there another month, I would have been like, Mom, don't take the ten. Take the one or something. <laughs> um, but. No, because that's like, that's so, that's almost a, that's a parody. I know. <laughs> um, it would have been funny if we all were doing that accent. Uh, but initially it was like the accent, and then it was also just the things that they would talk about. You know, the conversations that they would have, that Lauren Conrad and Adrena would have, sitting down talking about like, oh, I love that dress, or let's go to Le Doux tonight, or something like that. It seemed really foreign, but I think I needed to familiarize myself with just the kinds of conversations that people were having during that time period and out there in that area. If you could hang out with some of those people, would you want to? I would totally hang out with Lauren Conrad. Why her? Because I watched Laguna Beach before I watched The Hills, because I'm like a nerd and I need to have backstory, so I watched all of Laguna Beach and all of The Hills too. And I yes, was, for I'm, backstory. Yeah, no, I wanted to know where she came from, um, and I'm obsessed with Laguna Beach now, so I would totally hang out with her. She would not want to meet me though. Why? Because we like robbed one of her friends in the movie. I don't know. It's just a movie, um, though. Yeah, but some people get they get really affected by films. Like I know when Paris was watching this, she was kind of freaked out about how real it was. But did she let you take any souvenirs from her house? No. <laughs> Actually, she. You know what? Actually, she gave us all all of us girls. She gave a big bag of goodies, like a purse and perfume and stuff. It was actually really nice. Did you ever watch before? For, like not for the movie, like Simple Life, stuff like that. Did your parents, do you remember ever being told something about like, this is not real life? This I, is remember <laughs> being, I remember being told that I wasn't allowed to watch those shows. Really? Yeah, I think my mom, my mom wanted to keep me away from that as much as possible. Which, which shows in particular? Like The Hills, Simple Life, or, or just write, like scripted shows like Gossip Girl or things like that. Um, the OC, uh, like my mom wanted me to be able to be a little more free thinking than those girls were. How do, you, how do you feel like you fared as the ringleader in that first mock robbery? I think I was a little nervous. Um, I got an email from our production assistant, Katie, and she was like, here are the directions, here's the list of stuff, figure out how to get there, good luck. 
and I was really nervous, but I think I did okay. I think I, I definitely, I was really bossy. I was like, you guys, you have to get this together. Like, stop laughing, stop being goofy, um, which you don't really see much of in the movie. I had to tone it down a little bit, my <laughs> bossiness. Um, but I think I did okay. I think it, what was interesting is that when we were doing that mock break-in, we all kind of realized the, um, the different roles that the kids had played and also just the group. They weren't really trying to do like a heist or anything. They were just having fun and hanging out and being goofy and silly and r ridiculous. Was there something that surprised yourself? Like you couldn't believe it came out of you or that you acted that way during that time? <laughs> I remember seeing a bag and thinking, like saying out loud, oh my God, that's so cute. <laughs> and then I stopped myself and I was like, no, Katie, ground yourself, no. Um, With, yeah. Within the... With, within the, well, when we were filming, there were so many so much stuff like that, but when we were breaking in, I was like, there was a bag that was hanging that wasn't on our list, and I was like, I want that. <laughs> um, but hopefully that's the, I know that's the response that Sophia can elicit with this film, is that people are watching the movie and they're like, oh my gosh, that looks so much fun, I love that bag, I love that hat that she's stealing, and then the kids get arrested, and you're like, I can't believe I was getting into this. So you felt like the character kind of took over. Yeah, I guess. Or maybe it was just my um, inherent female qualities, <laughs> liking a bag. <laughs>